Some of the most iconic work in the center block, permanently cut into the nation's walls. Yet few people know who left it there. I told them to give me deadlines. If you don't give me deadlines, I'll just dream. She was full of life and she was full of character. She surrounded herself with interesting characters and, and uh, you, you just felt you were alive when you were with her. The Dominion Sculptor, directing the Parliamentary Sculpture Program for 31 years with a keen and confident eye. I am aware of the many hands that are working the stone, capturing the stories of the peoples of Canada. Myself and my team are creating something that will last. I had a good friend who worked in health and welfare, Muriel. And Muriel told me that there was a job being advertised as Parliament Hill and maybe Eleanor would want to apply. So I told her, Eleanor, and she said, oh, they won't take a woman. And I said, don't be ridiculous, you might as well try. She got the job in competition against 20 men because she was the most fully qualified. She is 36 years old, leading a team of men. She didn't come from a rough working class background and a lot of the sculptors and the masons and the carvers um, did. And some of them were ex-military and uh, a lot of rough language was used, which wasn't, uh, I don't think, to her taste. <laughs> but I understand she got used to it. We work as one one head with many limbs. It's successful, and it's great. So she told me once how wonderful it would be to live on a ranch and be able to ride over the prairies all day. And to do that, she would need a rich husband. So that was secondary. It was the horses she was interested in. She has told me and others that you can't do the kind of thing in her life if you have a family, because you just don't have the time. Take that, you big lug, and don't you dare propose to me again without lifting your hat. Sculpture is uh, its much more of an anonymous art, and particularly when it comes to architectural sculpture, it's very anonymous. Architectural sculpture tends to blend into a building, and uh, it's usually the architect that gets credit for the building, and the sculptors are, are usually secondary to that. And um, that's certainly the case on the hill. The architect Pearson gets most of the credit for the building. Eleanor and her team carve hundreds of blocks, never signing their names. No one piece, they believe, belongs to any individual carver.
In Parliament, their workday begins in the middle of the evening and ends at dawn, always the graveyard shift. The rhetorical roar of parliamentarians just can't compete with the deafening noise of their art. She cuts right into the walls with confidence. Her predecessors were not so bold. They built detailed plaster models before touching the stone. Eleanor says she can arrange three-dimensional images in her head. A unique ability harnessed from childhood. When asked as a young child how she could draw perfect circles, Eleanor answered, first I think, then I draw my think. At school, she couldn't do academic work, and nobody knew why. She is a bright and energetic student who brings home distressing report cards. Impatient teachers force her to wear a dunce's cap but it's undiagnosed dyslexia holding her back. It's a determined and caring nun, Mother McCaffrey, who turns Milne's young life around. This bright child, she says, will learn to read. She knew she had perfect pitch. So when school started again in September, she got Eleanor to, to sing her Latin declensions. From then on, she was able to read. It, would, it was a complete transformation in her life, because up until then, she knew everybody thought she was stupid, and she thought maybe she was. It, it made the breakthrough. She believed everything had a soul, but for her it was more, it was more spiritual and religious. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If I were an Aboriginal person rather than of European descent, my quote would be, in the beginning was the Great Spirit. If I were living in ancient times, my quote would be, In the beginning was the Prime Mover. This is my foundation and my strength. She had a priest visiting her too at the last uh, once a week as well. and and. I, I don't know their conversations. She told me that she would always argue with him because he was always wrong. <laughs> As a child, and this probably affected my, my siblings more than me, she was so powerful a character and, and somewhat intimidating because she would always tell you what you should be doing with your life. You develop your own personality and Eleanor actually loved you to stand up to her and tell her she was full of shit. Uh, and then she backed down frequently. Eleanor carved the people's stories, preferring pioneers to politicians. I respect these offices but they have nothing to do with our ongoing history. I find myself drawn to works done by everyday people, diaries and notebooks, the history you can't find in textbooks. I feel an empathy with these people that I read about. They had no idea of what the future would bring. They didn't have a sense of history or their place in it. They just did what they had to. They explored. 
They chopped down trees. They raised children. These are the real heroes of Canadian history. As creator, or careful caretaker, she touched every public hall in center block. I cherish the reassuring warmth and the silence, broken only by our tools and voices. In the quiet, the building seems to be breathing. I am at home here. <laughs> 